even though I'm printing black and white prints, I have printed it in, or done the video in colour, should I say. So hi, and welcome to my channel. My name's Richard, and today this is a bit of a strange video because this is due to people commenting and sending me emails asking if I still have my printer. So I thought I would uh, do it in a video response rather than email lots of different people back and yeah let people know after three years if i still have the same printer and how to get rid of magenta casting <laughs> so let's get on with it so first of all i must say if you hear any strange noises next door are quite noisy they are um, soaring wood so if you hear any strange um, power tools that's why so do i still own the printer yes <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> no. So yeah, the, sim the simple answer is yes. I still own the uh, IP8750. Um, I have actually looked at updating the printer, but at this particular point in time, I don't feel that I need to. And this is part of the video, I guess. So I want to talk about pros and cons, and then I'll show you on screen the settings that I use, and we'll do two prints and we'll show you side by side just with two simple tricks how I get rid of magenta casting for myself on my prints things might be slightly different for you you might use different paper and you might use different printer descriptions but for me I'll show you what I use using standard Adobe settings and relatively cheap paper Okay, so I guess with everything in life, everything has its pros and cons, and what makes something good or bad depends on whether those pros or cons are good for you. Um, we're all individual and we all want different things out of life. So for me, this printer, um, let's take the pros. So the pros, the first thing that I looked at when I was looking for the printer was the fact that this had six inks. So it had three, um, well, two blacks and a gray. And because I um, predominantly shoot black and white, I wanted a printer that could give me fantastic grayscale. So for me, this being a six ink printer with two blacks and a, and a gray, I thought that it would give me the perfect blend without giving harsh lines. Um, I do print some colour on this and it is fantastic, the blacks are really punchy but as I say the main reason that I bought this printer was the fact that I wanted to print black and white. Another thing that I liked about this printer, I actually came from an Epson, I had an Epson, um, again A3 Plus printer and so I like the facility to go oversize A3. Um, so again, this is an oversized A3 printer, uh, but it also does A3 borderless, which is fantastic. Uh, again, going from the, um, the Epson printer, that was quite an old printer, whereas this is relatively newer. Uh, and so I thought obviously the DPI is a lot better on this printer and it will give me better renditions of the images that I'm capturing because now I've got a better camera and so hopefully I wanted to make use of, of that facility. So again, this is something that I found to be you know a great facility. Um, another thing that I quite like about this printer is the fact that it is quite a small form factor. So you can put it out, you can do your prints, but you can easily pack it away and stow it in a cupboard or on a shelf and it doesn't take up that much room. It is a big printer, don't get me wrong, because again, oversize A3, and it does stick out a few inches from the paper. Um, but again, you're not gonna be doing hundreds of prints. Um, well, I presume you're not. I'm not, definitely, anyway. So for me, I can use it, I can store it away, and then just get it back out again when I need to print. It's not that heavy, and so that, for me is a bonus. So another plus for me, again, with the paper, is the fact that it will take quite heavyweight paper. I believe it's 300 grams, don't quote me on that. But that means I can print some really good posters. And 
Um, you can also print labels, which is fantastic. Um, again, we've printed stuff here in the studio for the networking nights. So we have prints on the wall where we've uh, printed other people's work and our own work. We also print posters here for uh, promotion for some of the nights that we put on. Obviously at the moment, there's all this COVID stuff going on, so we can't really do that, but we have been refreshing work um, for ourselves, for our own portfolio. So something that is, um, <laughs> it's a plus and a minus, is the fact that you can get the inks in local stores. So here in the UK, we can get these inks in Sainsbury's, uh, PC World, and then online on things like Amazon and eBay. Um, it is also a con, um, which I'll talk about in the con section. <laughs> so I guess one of the pluses, uh, pros, is the fact that if we have clients in the studio or models um, and also things for ourselves, we can just make a print. We don't have to send it to a bureau, to a lab, wait for a week to 10 days for it to come back. Um, we can instantly print out stuff from our folio uh, and we can actually see, again, how something's going to print. So if we do need to send it off to a lab, we can do a test print um, and then make any modifications that we need to do in Photoshop or whichever program we've made the, the picture in. Um, so the facility to do that is absolutely fantastic. The fact that we can proof in-house um, and actually give out things so we can we can give prints to family or like I said to clients that come in they can take a print away um, which is almost in instantaneous which that facility is fantastic so there are some other pros but uh, <laughs> making these videos you know you kind of I don't um, write things down it's all off the cuff and so I'll probably remember a few more pros um, when I'm actually editing this video but anyway so we'll talk about some of the cons so some of the cons are the fact that, as I mentioned about the inks, it's a six ink printer um, and you can get the inks in local supermarkets and stores, but they only come in packs of four and five. Um, when it's a six ink printer, I don't understand that. Um, the hardest ink to get is the gray for some strange reason. Um, you can, like I say, go into Sainsbury's and pick up the pack of five. Uh, main inks but yeah the, the gray seems to be something that not many people stock fortunately Amazon stock it and it only takes a few days to uh, arrive um, but that's a bit of a strange one the fact that you can't just go into a shop and buy six inks in a pack for this printer um, another con I guess is the fact that depends on how much you print um, if you intend to print quite a lot, then you can go through inks quite easily. It does go quite quickly when you print on the highest print setting. Um, I haven't actually worked out how many prints we're getting, but I'm roughly getting probably 30 prints on the best setting, full bleed images um, is roughly what I'm getting. Uh, I can probably make that better, as I say, if I lessen the quality, um, don't go borderless, but for, for me, for my needs, that's what I'm finding out at the moment. Um, so the print costs are, I guess, three pounds, 350, maybe slightly more, depending on what paper you go for, um, which isn't too bad. Um, again, going to different bureaus, you can actually get prints cheaper and more expensive. So it's one of those things. Um, it depends if you go to a bureau and they've got a higher level printer, then you might actually uh, be beneficial going there. But otherwise, this is fantastic for the price point, definitely. Um, I guess another con is, it's not necessarily down to the printer, I guess, it's the paper. Um, the paper is quite expensive and going through different things to find things that you like, you end up wasting a lot of ink and wasting um, different papers. Fortunately, I found a paper that I quite like and it is reasonably cheap. Um, the only downside to this paper is the fact that it doesn't have printer descriptions. So I've had to spend time going through working out the best setting for this printer. Um, 
fortunately now I've done that and so for me now it's actually not too bad I can just send it to print and I know I'm going to get the print that I've hoped for so again another con and probably the biggest con with this printer is the fact that you can't use the professional level software with this printer um, I actually went to a um, well it was a photography place which there was a Canon Pro representative going there and that's one of the reasons I went there and I tried to talk to him about this printer um, and it was almost like he dismissed it and dismissed me because he was trying to sell and showcase the three pro level printers at the time. Um, I asked about the software uh, and unfortunately unless there's a hack you can't run that software on this printer or it's not supported which is a bit of a shame because I can see that they're trying to aim the other printers at the professional market but I think if this had the facility for the professional level software you could un, um, unwrap or whatever you call um, some of the features in this printer because when you do tinker about under the skin in Photoshop or wherever you're going to print from, you can get this to print some pretty good images. Um, yeah, so I think they've limited the market by not letting it have the pro features. Um, but I can understand that obviously the price point to not let this beat or to print at least the same as the next level above this which again is like twice three times the cost so speaking of print quality let's head into photoshop now and check out the settings that i use um, and i'll show you the different thing that i do to get rid of the magenta cast okay so i don't have any software to record the screen so I basically just pointed the camera at photoshop <laughs> on the uh, 27 inch imac so this is a shot that I did with a model recently um, and so let's do a test print. So what we've got here is um, an A3 size piece of paper which is the white border which is uh, this is A3 size and sometimes I like to just sync the um, the image within the white border. So what we'll do is we'll go Apple P or print and for me what I've done is in here on color handling I say Photoshop manages the color and that is quite important because what tends to happen is when you buy the printer both Photoshop and the printer try and fight against each other to handle the colors so by saying Photoshop handles the colors, Photoshop has quite a good color gamut. Um, and then under here we have loads of printer descriptions. This again, you'll find your paper, your printer. Um, and so for me, the one that I found that works is the IP8700 series SG2 LU2. And that is basically for luster. Um, so what we'll do is when we go into the printer, default settings, so we've got A3 size paper, color handling, obviously because you've selected Photoshop manages the paper, these two are now grayed out because otherwise you would choose either color sync or Canon color matching. So paper handling, so we've just got all paper automatic cover page don't really know about that quality media so here for me I've got my paper set to photo luster and the reason being is because that is the closest I can find to this luster kind of pearl paper that I've got um, tray rear which again some printers you can get which have got like a spool so you can roll put a roll of paper on um, we're on high quality and again, because I'm printing black and white, I'm printing grayscale. Again, this works, um, but it doesn't stop using the other colors. You'll find that it does actually use 
um, the other colours to make the print. So you're still using green, you know, like um, yellow, cyan, and magenta. And so we'll save that setting. Oh, and uh, obviously after that, you've got colour options. So again, you can actually tweak things if you know that you want to bring the magenta down. Um, and then obviously we've got the supply levels. So as you can see here, it is actually using cyan and magenta and yellow. It's not just using the three uh, blacks. So again, we'll save that. Okay, so another thing that I've found is if you make the print borderless and do exactly the same things so we'll go through the printer settings so Photoshop manages colors IP8750 SG2 LU2 so the main difference that I found is if we go A3 borderless So, as you can see, some absolutely beautiful prints with no magenta cast. If you uh, try this technique and you get some good results please do let me know because I am interested I'm interested to know if it does help if you find a better workaround um, but for me putting it on borderless black and white um, and those settings letting the um, Photoshop handle the colors uh, it's been fantastic and we have samples of our work on the wall um, and as you can see, two beautiful prints here, which I'm going to give the model. Um, but yeah, so I still have the printer. I do recommend it for the price. It would be nice if there was some pro features on it. Um, it's very, very slow for the first print and each print probably takes about five or six minutes. But if you can live with that and you only print a few prints, then it is a fantastic printer for the price, so you can't go far wrong. Um, hopefully that's it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. If people do have any more questions or want to know any more, then please do let me know, either on the video or email, and uh, I'll do my best to answer it. But hopefully this has answered a few of your questions and see the results that I get, and from somebody on a previous video i've done it in color this time so not just black and white even though i'm printing black and white prints i have printed it in or done the video in color should i say so yeah i hope that shows you some of the results you can get from the canon pixmar ip8750 Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.